Good morning, chickens. Bye, alpacas. It was great meeting you. Bye, alpacas. Oh, the sun's coming out. Yeah. Sun's coming out. All right. MP3. Hey. We're going backpacking again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fresh ground. Here we come. Mm -mm. Crossing underneath Interstate 81. There's a white blaze right there. This is the AT. Nights, Easter morning, birds singing. I'm taking my hat off, it's too hot. Okay. Just listen to the sounds of nature. Good morning. Welcome to day 38 and welcome to the Appalachian Trail. It is Stick here, or Stick the Eagle, and we are hiking northbound from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Mount Katahdin, Maine. Today we are starting from Long Neck Lair, and uh, we are hiking probably another 20 mile a day, but we'll see when it gets closer to afternoon and evening how far we do go, but we're just hiking northbound and uh, we're enjoying the journey. I'm so glad you're with us to uh, enjoy day 38 and uh, we are on a hike, MP3 and I. He just finished the section hike and now he's going a little bit farther so he can uh, maybe meet fresh ground. So let's do it, let's keep on trekking north. We are walking north and currently the wind's blowing south. And uh, what do we smell? But uh, we smell pancakes blowing to us. <laughs> we smell the pancakes from like 500 feet away. <laughs> hello, hello. Y'all know the deal, right? I do. You ate with me before? No. You have to wash your hands first. I, I'm well aware. I watch lots of videos. Here's <laughs> your finding mark. There's another one right here. And that's that. I got a full one right So because it's so Easter, we have Cadbury cream eggs at Fresh Grounds. Some treats for him? Oh, you got enough? I just gave him some more bacon. Breakfast. Okay, okay yeah, I'm dropping some more bacon. As soon as I get these eggs off. Oh, no. I but didn't think we can't pick on each other. Added so eggs. <laughs> Rolling? Oh, you're rolling. How was your first experience with Fresh Ground Leapfrog Cafe? Well, all the times I've seen him in videos with hikers, nothing compares to the actual experience of hanging out with Fresh Ground and hikers and being fed and being fed and being fed. It's a lot of fun and it was great. <laughs> yeah, being fed and he keeps putting food in us, keeps putting food in us and uh, also the community and laughter is a huge part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So glad to, to have you partake, and uh, so, so glad you got to meet him. Yeah, it's a great. And off of my, uh, my section hike this time. Yeah, got another two miles in you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, happy trails. These meadows are just gorgeous, with the landscape of the Appalachian Mountains. Wow. Happy Easter, great Easter morning with uh, some breakfast with MP3 and fresh ground. He gave us uh, some Cadbury cream eggs for Easter. So I've got that in my pocket for a little treat later. I've got my rain jacket on as a windbreaker because it is a little bit windy. It'd be warm otherwise. I'm sure when I get into the woods, I'll be stripping down back into my warm weather gear. It's supposed to be a high of like, 70 something today so that's great and like 70 something tomorrow and then a cold front's supposed to come through and uh there's talk of a snowstorm in the mountains wednesday night 
into Thursday. So, we're dealing with all kinds of weather and I did not expect to be saying the word snow again coming. Um, today's Sunday, Wednesday night into Thursday. We don't know how much we're talking yet, but they're saying at least a couple inches. This is how we get out of the field. There's no cows here, this is a cow pasture. I also got hooked up with my new water bottle holder, smart water bottle holder. Thank you, MP3, for this. I tuned into dinner last night. This is a thank you. This was amazing. You hooked me up with a smart water bottle and a few more smart water bottles. They're either on that side or on that side. There they are. Uh, so I've got my smart water bottle system and no more hanging water bottles on the side of my pack anymore. <laughs> They were getting holes in them anyway, so we have upgraded. Last night, I was up like past midnight trying to figure out my storage issue from my phone, and I finally figured out that I could purchase a storage, more storage online with like Apple Plus or something. So I figured out that it will automatically back up my uh, photos and videos and not take up storage on my phone and only come up when I need them. So that's golden. That should help me going forward. Do these hills start to look the same after a while? I don't know. Well, the birds don't sound the same. So I just came from up there. I thought for sure we were gonna keep following the top of that ridge line and go all the way up there. And I was bracing myself for more uphill. And then all of a sudden the trail turned down here. And then I see a random privy in the middle of the woods. So maybe it's for a shelter. I didn't think there was a shelter this close, but maybe there is. So this is an old shelter site. There's still steps leading up to a shelter and a picnic table and a fire ring. Now people can tent in this area and the privy still works. So I met Bloobs at breakfast today. He's just ahead of me right now. And uh, he told me that triple one is two days behind me. I must have passed him in Damascus or something without realizing it. Cause I was on the lookout for him. He's another one that uh, you know gives updates for. Now we got another little hill, little bumps and bruises today. The other thing I found out was that my friends are taking a less than 10 mile day uh, at the Sweetwater restaurant and uh, that road crossing where I stayed at the alpaca farm last night. So that makes it less, less likely that they will catch up to me in the near future. Beautiful Easter morning. It's beautiful out here, y'all. Where's Peter Cottontail? Where's the bunny trail? <laughs> it's beautiful out that way too. You can still see the views of the trees. March 31st. Wow, last day of March. So the alpaca farm is nice. They have laundry right in the bunkhouse. And uh, the sweet water restaurant was very nice but it's only open Friday through Sunday, so you have to catch it right when you're coming through town. If not, I've heard great things about the Mexican restaurant right there too by I-81. Uh, I didn't try that because the restaurant was open, but uh, I would try that if you can't get the restaurant when you're in town. Well, 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 can I make that big enough? One quarter! Just in this spot right here on one quarter. <laughs> one quarter. We've done it, y'all. We've done one quarter of the Appalachian Trail. Only three quarters to go. We have walked a quarter of the Appalachian Trail. That is more than I've, a lot more than I've ever done of hiking before. Ah, oh, let's be proud of ourselves for a moment, shall we? One quarter of the way there on Easter day, Cadbury cream egg to celebrate from Fresh Grounds. 
no switchbacks on this one today just straight up but the good thing is slow and easy and this is the last hill for a little while i just came up from down there again view through the trees a little bit more to do that's okay i might start listening to uh early risers book pushing north uh today i finally downloaded it last night since i finally solved my storage issue for now i think it might be appropriate to start listening to the book about the mental challenges of the hike right after crossing the quarter way mark because that's when you you're convinced that you can do the physical part of it and the mental aspect of it really starts to kick in in high gear you ever walk in the at Look over there and be like, I wonder why they chose this ridge line rather than that ridge line. Or you look over there and you're like, I wonder why the AT is on this ridge line instead of that ridge line. Well, it turns out the AT is going to go on that ridge line in a little while, but not do the whole thing. Just go like over there and then over. But uh, these are the things I think about when I'm hiking the AT. Why this ridge line? What made this ridge line the best one? I mean, it's nice. I'm enjoying it. It's just interesting to think about. Honestly, a lot of it's probably who owned the land and how easy was it to get land through this area. So, today's 12 o'clock tip for you all is get outside and enjoy the sounds of nature. It makes you feel good. At least it makes me feel better and I'm pretty sure it'd make you feel Feel pretty good too. Get outside, listen to the sounds of nature, listen to the birds chirping, listen to the wind rustle the trees, the sounds of the ocean crashing at the seashore, the sound of a roller coaster rushing past your ears. Oh, well, that's not really nature. <laughs> I'm not even a roller coaster person, but I know some people who watch are, so I had to throw that in there. Just do whatever you can to enjoy it outside. You need outside time. That's your 12 o'clock tip today. We've only done six miles by 12 o'clock today, but uh, I slept in a little bit because I was up late last night editing videos and trying to figure out storage like very late. And then we had breakfast at Fresh Grounds, which I enjoyed. So that's okay. Late start means less miles by noon, but we're still enjoying it out here and that's all that matters. We're going down this hill here into a valley where there's a nice water source. So I'll fill up on water. I'll eat some of the apples that I got in resupply because those are heavy to carry for too long. Um, and uh, have some a little bit of lunch, get my pack a little bit lighter. Well, I guess it'll be heavier because I'm going to add some water, but I need water to drink. Original goal today is 24 to Chestnut Knob. I may or may not make that. We'll see. Um, especially since I still have 18 to go to get there. But um, I'm just gonna walk and then see what time it is at like, you know, six o'clock and uh, make a plan from there. I do make goals for myself and I do still have fleeting hopes of still finishing by mid-June before my summer camp job starts. But in the end, I'm just enjoying it out here and just going with the flow and getting as far as I get and being okay with that. And uh, I know I'm gonna finish this year regardless uh, of whether it's in June or in August. So I'm not too concerned about that. Just trying to enjoy life and not rush it. But it's not bad to set little goals for yourself and just be okay if you don't get there. So this morning we were having breakfast and I was with a group who, uh, Good Moss, uh, Burr, others who uh, only saw fresh ground like oh um blues was there only saw fresh ground like three or four times so far and uh here i am and uh fresh ground's like stick i keep seeing you and uh you were with the other group before and now you're ahead of them how many times have you been fed by me and i'm like this has probably been like 11 by now i'd have to go back and count and like their eyes wide and he tries to feed different groups of people but now i'm like with a different group of people and i just happened to catch fresh ground yet again look at this doing its trick 
the Stenok filter and into the bottle. I love this. This is a much better system than my bladders. All right, I've gotten some water. Now I have a little bit of a climb ahead. I think I'm gonna put in early Roger's book in my earbuds and uh, have fun. I think I need something a little bit different. So I'm looking forward to hearing what that has to say. Wow, 20 years from now, you will be more upset by the things you didn't do than the things you did do. What a way to begin. And so true at that. So what is the difference between a day hike and a long distance hike? Besides the distance, a long distance hike allows you to unplug for longer periods of time and escape the world for longer and what the world tries to tell us, I guess. I don't know. But uh, I really like the point that day hikes day hikes just don't allow you to escape your thoughts as much as a long distance hike does i didn't really start to really be alone with my thoughts and think about things that i don't normally think about because my mind's distracted by so much else in the world it doesn't happen in a day hike but it does when you're on the adventure of a through hike. Isn't that glorious? There's a nice stream up ahead. If all you can do is day hike, definitely do it. It's better than not going out in nature. But I'm so thankful that I can have the privilege of doing this long hike and really having some alone time just to contemplate. You know, this has been a climb. But I've hardly been thinking about it because I'm just thinking about pushing north and listening to uh, Early Riser. I like these earbuds and using them while I hike listening to books. They make me think less about how annoying climbs are sometimes. And uh, let me just climb, put my mind somewhere else for a while. I have to share another quote as I walk up this hill. Our brain always wants to seek comfort and safety. So as soon as we start to reach a moment of adversity, like when I was in the Smokies and I was freezing, or when I was doubting my tent at low gap on like day four or five, if that. <laughs> Those are moments of adversity where my mind's like, can you actually do this? I don't know if you should be doing this because we're not comfortable. We don't feel safe. But once you can get over that and uh, teach your mind how to work with feeling uncomfortable, that, that is when you actually find contentment. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I feel content right now just uh, listening so far and walking um, when there's not a lot of views anymore. It's not in the high elevations. But I've reached a moment where I, I do feel content. But there's still moments where I'm like, I feel lonely. Um, where are my friends? I'm walking alone. Like just a couple days ago in Tennessee where I said, I've got the Tennessee blues, but they didn't last long. I was like, gosh, it's not fun just walking alone all day, every day. But now I feel like I'm not walking alone because I've got early riser in my ear and uh, he takes a break when I take a break and uh, he walks when I walk and we walk the same speed and that's just amazing. I'm not gonna walk, like listen to audiobooks all the time. Like I just started after lunch today um, but uh, it is a nice break from the monotony of the afternoon sometime when I just want to push north and uh, help me get up some hills, give me the extra strength I need. Wow. Look at this view through the trees. Look at how steep that is. Wow. That's cool. 
It's a nice graded trail here, nice atmosphere here. Oh my. Oh wow. This is just gorgeous. Look at those mountains. Enjoy this with me for a minute. Wow. I love little views like this where there's no trees to block the view. They find a little road and they have nice blazes 80 north on the road and south. So it's up there. I'm gonna get to go up that little prairie hill. A skeleton. We were just up there. All right, the next really good point is that every hiker experiences some form of discomfort or mental doubt. And uh, Every hiker, who've, every hiker who's made it to Katahdin has had some of that. I've had some of that too. Um, I haven't had that much uh, physical pain, which I'm thankful for. But I did have a mental doubt early on. But uh, every hiker has it in Georgia. And some make it through, and if some make it through, so can we. Those who endure great challenges are most often changed. That's a lot of food for thought. Appalachian Trail. Look at how pretty. So, as Early Riser just said in his chapter one, as I've been listening, we can become the captain of our own minds. It's often when we perceive that we can't do something, that we believe that we can't do something. But if we believe that we can, then we can. We tell ourselves that we can, then we can. And they tell myself that I can do this hike and can continue to do this hike. And then it's all a matter of walking. Just simple walking. You ever get to the point where you just feel like you can't do something anymore and you just give up? I have too. I think we all have. But, <laughs> all the time we spend putting into this hike, I've read from somebody else too, um, something like this, that we put so much time into this hike and then so many people just give it up because they feel like it's too hard. And for the most part, it's because they ha you have like a s little bit of pain somewhere and you're like, well, it'll only just get worse. Um, like if I had the blisters and I'm like, well, I guess, I guess I'm done. Nah. A lot of times when you believe that you, when your mind tries to trick you into not doing something difficult anymore, that's when you stop. But we put too much work, too much planning into this hike to just say, nah, I'm gonna throw in the towel. I'm not gonna do that. We are heading north every single day, pushing north miles every single day, and I'm loving it out here. Beautiful Easter day out here. The next 10 miles, the Appalachian Trail travels through a narrow corridor that includes scenic tread, right-of-way easements to private property. To use outside the trail tread in these easement areas requires written permission of the landover, landowner. All right, yeah, what, a, what a cabin there. So, we are in a very thin corridor right now. These things, to climb over these fences are always so much fun to climb over with a full pack on. <laughs> I've had like four of these in the last like mile. 
I had to climb up and then down the other side. This little land is Easter Sunday. It's gorgeous. This land is our land. Hold on. It's an Easter egg. It's another Easter egg. What? There is chocolate in this Easter egg. My goodness. <laughs> Whoever did this, you are awesome. There's so many Easter eggs. <laughs> There's Easter eggs. <laughs> Another egg. We're just walking up this trail. Whoa, there's two more eggs, and another egg, and another egg, and more. There's eggs all over the place. Joys of seeing Easter eggs, even at 55 on the Appalachian Trail on Easter are amazing. Isn't it? Brings out the little kid inside of you. It's bringing out, bringing out in me too, like on Easter, just finding Easter eggs here on the Appalachian Trail. And here are people's, uh, I guess, <laughs> eaten <laughs> eggs. <laughs> so I decided to hike up the 0.2 miles to check out the bear because uh, someone recommended check it out real quick. Maybe I can use the Porta John while I'm here. It's uh, about four o'clock. It's 11 miles to Chestnut Knob. Uh, like two miles to the next shelter. So. That's just stating the facts. So they have a chapel. It's like a privy up there. A bunkhouse is right there. They do have a camera there that says uh, ring the doorbell to get them. It's a wash house with laundry and dryer. And the porta john was nice. And there's a lot of outdoor hangout areas. Well, y'all, I visited church on Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So this is the Bear Den Hostel. You have bunks here. I'm not staying here tonight. Nobody's actually staying here. Um, but they have a nice resupply here. Uh, I got my AT stand. And they have books. And they have ice cream. So I might get a little ice cream. I do want to stay too long because I want to keep on hiking. But this is awesome. They have little plates. Soda, everything you could need. I'm sitting in the chair making a little TV dinner uh, for $2. So I won't need to cook tonight and I can hike into the night a little bit. I had a nice TV dinner. I'm adding some cliff bars because I am low on cliff bars and uh, little like, candy and granola bar type things. And uh, had some hot dinner. We got a pop tart and some nice ice cream before I head out. I'm gonna sign their register and I got their stamp. It is really nice to take a little break like this. Um, it does mean I'm gonna do some night hiking, but I'm you know recharging my power bank from today, so I have a little bit of extra charge there, and uh, I don't mind that because now I've had dinner and uh, I can just hike till I I'm tired. And uh, I was a little tired. It feels great to sit down. So it was the bear garden. The owners here who left those eggs out. Uh, I talked to her and uh, she said, hey, did you see the eggs? And she's like, yeah, thank you for those eggs. That was great having that little chocolate along the trail and great surprise here at Easter. Alrighty, I'm heading back out on trail after an hour plus break at the Bear Den Hostel. That was a very nice place for a little dinner and some ice cream, and a little bit of a Wi-Fi connection when I don't have service, because I don't have service right now. So, I'm glad I stopped there. It is very tempting to stay there, because it's like five o'clock right now, but I've got daylight, I'm refreshed. I feel like I have more miles in me for the day, and I've only done 12 today so far, so I'll be happier getting some more miles behind me and uh, maybe doing a little night hiking again. We'll see how far I go. It's another 12 to uh, Chestnut. 
There are drinks and oranges, <laughs> unopened drinks in the river. Okay. We've got two short climbs and a big climb to uh, Chestnut, if we're going that far. You know what, I'm just thinking, it was warm out today, it was in the 70s, and it's gonna be in the 70s tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy getting these hills out of the way in the evening, and possibly night, when it's cooler. So, yay for evening hiking, cooler weather, and think to think I'm saying, wait till it's cooler, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week are supposed to be like brutally cold in the 20s. When I went into the chapel earlier, I was thinking, Christ the Lord is risen today. Pretty views at the top of this first hill. Have to look past all the trees, but not bad. Hey y'all, so part of me wanted to stay at that hostel and just relax with an easy 12 mile day. But the other part of me was like, only 12 miles, you can do more than that. And I can. And uh, I think I'm going to be glad that I pushed on from the hostel tonight um, and uh, go as far as I can because I was tired when I got in. My legs were weary. I sat down for a while, took off my shoes, ate a warm meal, had some ice cream. It's been about an hour there. And uh, had a good time by myself. But uh, overall, it refreshed me and uh, now I feel like I have the energy of a brand new day and I still had three hours of daylight left so in my mind I'm like let's just keep on hiking I'll be glad I covered the miles and uh, not like there were that many smiles to be had anyway at the hostel if I was going to be there by myself that was my reasoning so let's just get out there and keep on pushing north are you with me I always was a night owl uh, for a while. Then when I became a substitute teacher, I uh, started being a morning owl or morning owl, I don't know, a little bit more uh, because I had to be up early and I would go to bed earlier. But I feel like if I let myself revert back to being a night owl, it will be so, so easy to do. Uh, Cause here I am preparing to walk into the night again, which I did two nights ago and uh, I don't mind it. But if I have difficulty being an early riser, the only reason to perhaps not hike into the night is to avoid disturbing people if I arrive at shelters late. And I'm very conscious of that. So, mulling that over, I would prefer to get over, get up early but something in my body, when I wake up, if it's still dark out, I'm like, ah, I don't wanna pack up in the dark. Let me just wait till it's light. Let me wait till somebody else gets up. I guess that's part of the, uh, part of the issue staying in shelters versus a tent, because in a tent, you drive your own self getting up. In shelters, you, don't want to be the first to get up a kind of because you don't want to wake others up i don't know if that makes sense anyway i'm a night owl so i don't mind hiking at night and i find it's easier for me to keep hiking if i feel like i have energy uh and i don't have friends meeting at any particular shelter so it's not like i need to stop anywhere i have met people on trail who say they prefer night hiking, like hiking in the nighttime versus the day. And uh, my theory is, you know, if you have the energy, like I got the energy back today after eating a meal and some ice cream, if you have the energy, why not hike? It does mean I might be leaving my North Carolina friends behind for good. I don't know if I just keep on pushing, pushing, but it's like you're on a hike 
don't wait for anybody. I'll meet other people along the way and we'll just see what happens. This is my hike. I'm hiking the Appalachian Trail. And uh, if I work on gaining some days, as long as I enjoy the experience, I can do some long days and gain some days I lost in Georgia and North Carolina where I encountered some bad weather and the longer or the taller mountains. Also, with bad weather coming in Thursday, like wintry weather, and then it's supposed to be really cold Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I don't know what I'll be dealing with. So I'd rather, while well, it's nice and warm and it's supposed to be in like the 50s tonight for a low, while well, it's nice and warm and I have the energy, let's just hike because I might lose some miles late this week. But if you, if you have people who you enjoy traveling with and you want to hang out with them, smiles are more important than miles. I just don't have anybody I'm traveling with right now because I left them in Damascus. I found a random mini picnic table on the Appalachian Trail. Little tent site here with a small picnic table. I guess I'll sit down for a second. Not mall. Man, there's nobody here. I'm tempted to stay here. It's six o'clock. Nine miles to Chestnut. I think North is still calling me. It says that the AT footbridge over Lick Creek has washed out. It's about three miles from here. So what I've been getting out of the way tonight, uh, it's now about 6.45, so I've been hiking for 45 minutes since the shelter, is two 900 foot climbs. One before the shelter and one after the shelter, which is right now. And uh, then I go down to this spot where apparently a bridge is washed out. And then it's like a 2000 foot climb to Chestnut Knob. So it's like 4,000, almost 4,000 feet of elevation that I'm trying to do late in the evening here. Well, it's early in the evening right now, but uh, I'll be up and over these two 900 foot hills well before sunset. And then it'll just leave the 2000 climb to Chestnut Knob. So that's not too bad and it'll feel great to have these three climbs behind me, especially since I'm doing them so late in the day. That's a good feeling. I think it's good for my momentum too. So my momentum going into tomorrow and uh, getting some miles in before the cold hits. I think it's a good decision. I hope it's a good decision. It's warm out, so it's not like, it's not like the time I went up Klingman's in the freezing cold. This time it's warm. Going up, up, I don't know if you can see the tread of the trail there, but up that ridge line, way right up to the top there. So, yay! But uh, I'll get this done in no time. You know what, early riser, I know you watch some of these videos and uh, I've been listening to your book all day <laughs> and uh, just finished the two chapters about the uh, Elephant and the writer. The writer is the rational mind. The elephant's the irrational mind. So my writer wrote a plan for this hike that says I'm going to finish in 115 days. And uh, now that I am seven days behind schedule, my elephant's like, you're seven days behind schedule. You've got to do these miles. You've got to catch up. And here I am trying to push the miles that I planned for today here late at night <laughs> so that I feel good about the miles accomplished. So my writer might have rewrote and said, you know what, it's okay. I can just settle here at the last shelter. But my elephant's like, nah, push on, get the miles done. So that's fun. I still think I'm gonna be happier having gotten these miles done and doing some night hiking, but uh, man, that battle rings true right now. <laughs> Still have a little bit more hill here on that second climb. 
I'll try to keep making rational decisions. But yeah, as you go later in the day, or sometimes as you get colder and you have less energy, your mind starts becoming less rational. So, have to be wary of that, especially when you're out here in the wilderness and there's no one out, no one out here to help you if you make a bad decision. I think though my rider is still somewhat in control because, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm thinking about rationally about uh, doing more miles now so that I can do less miles if the snow comes. Wow, look at that. That's the mountain I just climbed up and over, down, and now back up. That feels good, and it's beautiful. Wow, look at how beautiful this is. So beautiful. That's pretty, isn't it? Look at that sun setting behind that mountain range. Wow. I still have to descend this mountain and ford that stream and then climb up to the ridge right before me, which is where Chestnut Knob is somewhere on that ridge. So I'm not gonna stick around too long for sunset, but that's pretty. That's the climb I just descended from, am descending from. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, sun is beautifully departing behind that mountain. I just refilled my water bottle down here with fresh water from my spare bottles here. So now they're empty, but uh, that's okay because that one's full. So that'll last me for the night and I have it accessible. So I don't have to worry about dealing with these bottles, those spare bottles in the dark. I'm preparing myself for hiking in the dark a little bit, as I just said, but my focus right now is getting to that stream that I'm supposed to have to ford before dark. And then I just have to worry about the climb up. I also just had a Snickers and uh, drank a lot of water. So I'm well hydrated and fueled. Well, y'all, I'm at mile 18 on the day right now with six miles left to go. We're almost at the creek we're supposed to be fording, but uh, it's getting dark, so I want to fill my outro. I'm going to keep walking. Like you said, about six miles left in the day. It's not a big issue. I have plenty of energy. I ate my Snickers. I refueled myself. I rehydrated, and the chestnut shelter is... I uh, fully enclosed, so it should be a nice shelter. I will be careful when I go in. If there is anybody in there, um, I will investigate with my red light and see what the case is. And if there is somebody in there, I will be very careful not to wake them. Uh, I don't know exactly what time will be there. It's about 7.30 right now. So it might be 10 o'clock before I get there, especially with the 2,000 feet of elevation. But... I'm okay with that. Usually I'm up till 10 anyway, editing. Um, I'll see how tired I am when I get there to see if I still edit or whether I save it for tomorrow, but don't want to fall too far behind on that. Anyway, we're on an AT journey, y'all. And uh, we are at mile 560 something right now. So, We've been doing this for a while. Today has been day 38, and uh, I'm enjoying it, y'all. And I'm so thrilled that you're watching to this point because you're dedicated if you're watching right now because my videos are long, and uh, if you're watching right now, you're watching to the end. So thank you for all your support. Uh, even just by watching, even if you don't leave comments, I appreciate it uh, and the uh, good vibes you're sending my way. But please do leave comments. I love reading your comments. Usually I don't get to them until a couple days later because uh, of service, but I read them and I read every single comment. I'm no longer able to respond to every comment because there's been getting to be too many of them and uh, I'd be awake all night. 
and it's already enough work trying to get the videos uploaded, but I do read them, so I appreciate them. So, if you'd like to follow along for some more AT content, please be sure to subscribe. We are, we have many, many more miles ahead of us. We just crossed a quarter way today, so we have three quarters of the way to go. We're going to start pushing some bigger miles, might have some interesting days. So tune along to find out how it goes. It's getting darker as I get lower. <laughs> so please subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to follow along for Instagram live updates, when I have enough service to do so, I will post on Instagram with the same handle as my YouTube, at Stick the Eagle. This is fun, you all. I'm so glad you're out here with me. <laughs> so, remember, wherever you're at, whatever journey you're on, embrace it. Embrace your journey and always happy trails. By the way, Early Riser, if you're watching this, thank you for telling me about your book and uh, giving me the ability to listen to it. I appreciate it. I've been listening to it all day and I'm at like chapter five now. I've actually listened to like chapters twice. Most chapters I've listened to twice in a row before I move on to the next one. So I really try to get what it's saying. So I've been enjoying it and I'm gonna continue to enjoy it. This book, Pushing North, has made me laugh out loud on multiple occasions. <laughs> Some you get. When you're a hiker, you understand, I just want to reach the top of the mountain. Or I don't want to get out of bed when it's super cold. We all have the same stories. At least some of the same stories. Well, this is the stream. There's the old bridge, it's washed away. But uh, those rocks are not that bad. I might be able to find a way over there. All right, here goes. If I get wet feet, they should dry out. I'm gonna hike up the mountain. All right, y'all, I decided to take off my shoes and roll up my hiking leggings and walk through the river this way. I don't know <laughs> what you guys would do about taking off your shoes and putting on your camp shoes, but that's what I feel like doing right now. Well, I'm on the other side, and uh, that was oddly uh, entertaining. It was cold, but, but I feel okay. So, good night, you all. Happy hiking. I don't know how much you can see, but this is a steep climb up to Chestnut Knob. We're just uh, going straight up this. <laughs> but we're having fun. I just passed a tent at a campsite. We're about three miles and it's nine o'clock.